Well, good morning, everyone, and I hope you brought your camel today. Uh-oh, guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Huh? Anybody? Because today is... Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Leslie, guess what today is? Say hump day. Say hump day. It's hump day. Hump day. Okay, I got that uh, video released last night on the river monsters. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. The river monsters of the Monongahela River. And we do have some. Plus, we do have some other cryptids lurking about these woods. And I'll talk more about them in the future. If you all like to like a little bit of uh, cryptozoology in with your paranormal. Anyway, I will start shuffling as I speak. Now, let's see. Um, do you have a, a second segment coming up today? And it's an extension on the Beneficial Herbs series of segments I've been doing. Except this one is for resins. Beneficial resins. And resins do come from plants. Just uh, in a little bit different manner. And I've got the four examples I'm going to talk about with me here today. So. As soon as we do our reading, I'll get right on that. Okay. Today's card is the Princess of Swords. This card can represent a person in any area of life, but it can just as well mean an experience in the corresponding area in question. As a person, this card shows a young woman who knows how to continually sharpen her mind and her tongue. In doing so, she can sparkle with expiry, charm, and impressive logic, or in exaggerated form, she personifies the type of animus-possessed woman. This is a woman who proclaims in part completely unintendable options, often more than one at the same time, with a metallic clatter in her voice, the singular purpose of which is to silence the other person. In this aspect, the card indicates an altogether quarrelsome person. In general, though, like all princesses, the daughter of the air, or storm clouds in this case, also refers to an excess of pure energy capable of having negative as well as positive effects. She personifies either the threatening altercation and approaching conflict or, inversely, the opportunity to settle an existing conflict through a clarifying conversion where the objectivity and the analytic mind of the other person help spring clarity into our own entanglements. On the conscious level, we tend towards hastiness and rest restlessness, provocation and nervous aggression. We attract situations of conflict when we are attacked and run off into difficulties on the basis of our existing habits of thought and mental outlooks. Whether this results in a defeat for us or an enriching perception is ultimately a question of our maturity, willingness to learn, and a chance in our way of thinking. On a professional level, this card means that we must be prepared for conflicts, animosity, discord, and perhaps polemic attacks as well. With this background, it can be show the beginning of the end of our current work. 
yet it can also signify the fresh, possible biting wind chasing away the trouble in the air and bringing with it a clarification of our work environment. For relationships, in the area of our personal relationships, we find ourselves in a conflict that either originates in one of the partners or is experienced as a threat to the partnership itself. Too often we miss the beat in our dealings with the opposite sex and force our own neurosis upon the other person. In this respect, the card can show a clarifying discussion, but more often it deals with a quarrel that has already started and does not lead to new standpoints or perceptions. Okay, the incense for this card is lavender and the stone crystal is turquoise. There you go. There's your card for today. Hope that makes sense for you all. Now, let's get to those resins. Now, I'm starting off with frankincense. Frankincense resin originates from the Boswelli trees, which appear in parts of Africa and the Middle East. The resin itself appears in small, pale yellow crystals, which is burned to release its aromatic properties. For thousands of years, religious traditions have used this delicious smelling incense for a multitude of purposes. In fact, around the time of the birth of Jesus Christ, frankincense was incredibly popular and valuable. So much so that the three wise men presented frankincense at Jesus' birth. Frankincense contains active chemical compounds that provide some health benefits to human health that has been proven or not yet proven. Frankincense is also called an amazing gift of God that is known as mastermind oil. Okay, here are the best proven health benefits of frankincense. It protects the liver. It can treat herpes. It improves immune function. It treats inflammatory bowel disease. It can inhibit tumor growth. It can reduce the symptoms of arthritis, lower blood pressure, relieve pain, prevent diabetes, prevent cardiovascular disease, treat skin disorders, treat bronchial asthma, treat hepatitis C, delay aging on skin, and something that's not yet been proven, but it is said to be able to cure cancer too. And as I always say with all of these, don't depend on these, don't depend on me. I am not a doctor. Go see a doctor before use this as a fallback if anything but uh yeah see a doctor first frankincense can support recovery after birth improve clarity while breathing relieve mouth sores treat depression fast fasten wound healing remove scars treat cold and flu prevent Alzheimer's, relieve Parkinson's disease, promote good mood, relieve anxiety, soothes nerves, moisturizes dry skin, treats rash, relieves restless syndrome, moisturizes dry hair, relieves injured bones, Treats blood disease fever. Treats neurological disorders. Treats dysentery. Treats cirrhosis. Enhances vision. Treats insect bites. Relieve Bell's palsy. 
and relieve persistent sense of loss. Of course, we're kind of more interested in the smudging aspects. Now, when you smudge with this, it cleanses and balances the mind, body, and spirit. It helps reduce stress. It assists in mindful meditation practices. It increases your connection to the, the divine. It may help relieve anxiety and depression. And frankincense resonates with the spiritual part of the body and stimulates the activation of the following energetic centers, which is the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, the crown chakra, and the soul star chakra. All right. Next up, we have myrrh. And myrrh's been used for very many things. And a big one of those uses was in the embalming of mummies. And I saw on a thing on YouTube this morning, um, they, they commented about how it's odd that, uh, you know, Myrrh is associated with death and things like that. And how odd it was that they should have given the baby Christ this incense that's associated with death. I thought that was a, an interesting point. I never really thought about. And so, you know, it's through biblical stories that you're probably familiar with the name Myrrh. It's a reddish-brown dried sap from the thorny tree. It's called Camiphora myrrha. And it is native to southeastern Africa and southwest Asia. Myrrh is good for killing harmful bacteria. It may support oral health. It supports skin health and may help heal sores. It combats pain and swelling. It might be a powerful antioxidant, and it can kill some parasites. Other possible benefits of it could be as a sunscreen. Uh, it'll help prevent cancer. Helps gut health. Helps kill mold. But with everything, this comes with potential risks, too. When you get it as an, an essential oil form, okay, it's very concentrated. So you only need a few drops at a time. But you should avoid diffusing it close to babies and young children. And there, there we go is uh, the thing with Jesus. Why were they giving it to Jesus? <laughs> It's uncertain how much is safe for them to inhale. Additionally, no one should swallow mar oil as it can be toxic. Some people should be especially cautious with mar oil and may need to avoid it entirely. Bear this in mind if any of the following conditions apply to you. If you're pregnant and breastfeeding, if you've got if you're on blood thinning drugs, if you have heart problems, if you have diabetes, if you're going to be going under surgery. But, like I said, we're interested in the smudging aspect of this. And this uh, says the sacred resin not only helps to maintain a state of enlightenment, but when it's burned, it also clears negative energy and illusions that stand in the way of seeing the truth. Hmm. 
So it's a bit of an eye-opener, I guess you could say. Okay, next up is Kapal. And in this case, I have the white Kapal. Kapal has been used for thousands of years, dating back to pre-Columbian times, when the Aztec and Mayans used it for sacred ceremonies. The word Kapal is derived from the Aztec word Kapali, meaning incense. While it was commonly used for incense, it was also used for other purposes, including an adhesive, binder for pigments, a chewing gum that had medicinal functions, and for ceremonial figurines. The sap or resins from a tree were considered the blood of the tree, and needless to say, Kapal was very revered as an important part of their civilization and spiritual practices. While we refer to Kapal coming from the Bursera Phagoroides tree, Mayan sacred scriptures of Popol Vuh said the stars, sun, and moon arrived on earth to come together as Kapal. The Mayans and Aztec collected various resins from the Bursera, say, or tor Torchwood genius. Now, white Kapal, which is what I have here, is also called the Saint or Copal Blanco it is associated with purity as it is not processed and holds a light white color also known as the saint. It has strong cleansing ability and inviting in the divine to purify. Now the benefits of Copal it has been said to have been successful when used on the skin to combat infections and issues such as dermatitis, burns, and rashes. Some use it as an expectorant, thinning out mucus and aiding congestion and cough, and to ease muscle aches and pains and arthritis. Now, when using it, burning it as smudging, though, it helps to relieve insomnia, anxiety, it's good for meditation and for energetic cleansing. Now, Kapal is associated with the crown chakra and is used to cleanse and uplift the auric body and clear energy blockages. It also provides protection and is used for blessings. You can use this smoke to cleanse crystals in areas at home or work or during sweatshop lodge ceremonies, as indigenous people still do. Some healers burn it to, to diagnose one's energy field and to be able to better see and cleanse blockages. All right. And now, okay, last up, we have dragon's blood. Okay, dragon's blood is a natural plant resin. It's dark red in color, which is part of what gives dragon blood its name. The resin is extracted from many different tropical tree species, commonly called dragon trees. These may come from the plant group Croton, Pterocarpus, Demonorops, or Dracaena. The plant resin has been used for thousands of years for distinct purposes. There are records of its use among the ancient Greeks, Romans, and in India, China, and the Middle East. Some of its uses are for health. It's been also used as a dye, a paint, incense, or for spiritual purposes. It has strong, somewhat sweet-smelling fragrance not unlike vanilla and spices. Dragon's blood products from the Dracaena and Demonorops genus are the most common and widely used today. And I, the dragon blood tree, the Dracaena tree that I'm familiar with, it all, I, I know that tree so distinctively because to me it looks like someone took an ordinary tree pulled it up from its roots, flipped it over, 
and stuck the top down in the dirt. That's what the, the tree looks like with just the bare roots sticking up out of the ground. That's what I always think they look like. Now, it could possibly treat ulcers. Um, and they've done studies on this. Uh, they've done studies on its antimicrobial properties. They've done studies on that. And it's, you know, it's beneficial. Uh, I don't know how far they've taken it. But it does does say that dragon's blood can't be considered a replacement for infection-fighting medical approaches like antibiotics, although it could bring mild benefits for minor conditions. It can be an anti-diarrheal and also an anti-inflammatory, an anti-diabetic, an anti-cancer, and that research is in its early stages still. But uh, let's see, it can treat acne and acne scars. It's good for anti-aging, and it boosts collagen products and helps boost skin regeneration. So it's being looked at in a lot of scientific ways for its benefits, but for our smudging purposes alone, it's used for meditation, in ritualistic ceremonies, for relaxation, for yoga, increasing focus, and purifying the air. Overall, I guess you could say it just brings a calm effect to the room. It helps you concentrate, and it's calming, relaxing. It clears your mind, enables you to focus more deeply on things. So there you have it. The four resins that... Uh, they're my favorite, my favorite resins. Well, that's all I wanted to talk about today. Hope you all have a blessed Wednesday. It's day two of Yule. Three days till Christmas. So peace, believe, and let's count down to those ho, ho, hoes. Ho, 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 ho. Bye-bye.